Hi, everybody. Welcome to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Aaron Shea. Um, thank you for joining us on YouTube. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Uh, we're, I'm honored today to have uh, artist Marta Klanowska join us uh, to give us a presentation about her life, career, and work. Um, and it, it's going to be uh, very enlightening. I'm really excited about this. I've been a huge fan of Marta's works for years. So is my partner, Corey, and, and uh, predecessor, Ferdinand and Kathy. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I want to invite Marta to say hello. So feel free to join yes. us now and say hi. Hello to all. Hi. <laughs> hi from Poland. I am now on the countryside in Poland near East Sea. A far away, but I am very happy to see you all today evening, evening or midday. <laughs> Thanks. How Thank are you? you? Thank you, Marta. And I'm also today joining us is Martin Lorch. He is a friend and a, and a partner of Marta. Say hello, Martin. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, a long time uh, gallerist, as we say here, a, a dealer um, of Marta's work. Uh, my gallery is in Berlin, and I say hello to everybody, and I'm happy to join this uh, video talk. And uh, yeah, um, I think uh, Marta will do a good job tonight. <laughs> and, uh, of course, <laughs> yes. So it's a little bit different this time. Marta is going to be showing uh, her verbiage on the screen as well. So you can see the text she'll be speaking. This will be just in case you wanted to follow along, follow along um, and uh, make sure you don't miss any of the details she, she has spoken about. So I am going to first take over your screen and start with my side of the presentation and uh, show a couple of videos. So first we wanna say welcome to Marta and thank you for joining us for this Habitat Now. You click over to the screen and click next. Uh, some housekeeping. So upcoming next weekend is our launch of the Glass Art Fair. This is our very first online art fair celebrating the artists in the who are uh, many of us know and love in the contemporary glass art world. It will be launching next week. The AACG will have a first look preview uh, next Friday during their talk with a VIP password and it launches to the public on Sunday, November 1st, at I think 11 o'clock. So keep, mark your calendars. It's gonna be pretty amazing. A lot of the artists have been looking forward to this during the pandemic so they're able to share the works they've created and all works are available for sale. Show a couple slides of the works that are in our upcoming uh, Glass Art Fair exhibition by Marta and the inspirational photo, the paintings that they came from. This particular one is a poodle that is green. You can see the detail on the face and the entire figure um, uh, I've seen these in other colors, but I love the blues and the greens. And this is the uh, painting that inspired, this looks like the same artist that inspired the other painting we saw in the uh, video piece. Uh, very, so it's so funny how they're so small, but they have such an impact on you to create something so impressive. And then the, uh, the next piece we have is a green poodle or a blue poodle, different movement, different design, just a stunning, uh, stunning work. Another, uh, the painting that inspired that, the tiny poodle down there, even the movements of the tail and the head are similar to the actual sculpture. And then it's similar to the commission you're working on, but an older piece we have at the gallery is a monkey of, uh, but you're gonna talk about this particular style okay. more in your presentation. So I'll just give you guys mm -hmm. a glimpse. I have also. Uh, okay. of, of the tail going down, different than the one that she's working on now. So without further ado, I'm gonna take stop sharing and let Marta take control. Of the, okay. uh, of the presentation okay. she can show us. And like I said, there will be words on the screen for those who want to okay. follow along. Okay. Yep, looks okay. good. Just move that Zoom thing out of the way. And okay. um, Sorry, I have to, oh, good. Perfect. So oh, there will be, be words on the screen to follow along should you need to uh, catch any parts or miss anything. Oops, sorry, sorry. This, uh, good. I hope it's, it's working. Um, I need also the text panel. I think it's better to understand me because my English is not so very perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very happy to be here with you today mm -hmm. on the occasion. Oops, I don't know why I have this problem with some. Maybe, oh, sorry. No um, worries, take your time. Good. I hope it's working. We can all hear you. Good. I'm very happy to be here with you today on the occasion of my artist talk at Habitat Gallery. Thank you for your interest in my, or Istota. Istota from Polish is beings in all creatures that are born in my studio. 
Here I am telling you about the work process. Um, and there are some questions. How did I get into glass art? I started at the Art Academy in Dusseldorf where I dealt a lot with lithography. I'm um, sorry, I don't know what I have. You have to see this. Uh, we, um, are, we are seeing a bunch of shards of red glass. Yeah? Good. Yep. Okay, um, good. Um, uh, I studied at the Art Academy in Düsseldorf where I dealt a lot with lithography, drawing and painting. But I always been interested in three-dimensional art objects. Since childhood, I, ha I, had, I have loved to make figures of clay and putty to build wall, words and situation. During my studies, I have come to a point where I have found that I have to draw my artistic strength from traditional sources, from roots, from honesty with myself. I have to do what fascinates me, so about all three-dimensional objects. But I didn't want to use classic sculptural solutions made of clay or stone. At some point, I had broken bottles in the studio and realized that uh, something completely new could be created of, uh, out of the broken glass, something that had lost shape something completely new. Glasses material is very seductive, colored, shiny, tempting. I wanted to use these properties, but I knew that one should deal with this material in a disciplined manner so that the results is not only the aesthetic effect of the attractive material. So I wanted to, to do something that seems rather unusual and almost in, <laughs> inappropriate, sorry, in this material. So I started to build shoe objects out of metal and glass. It was one of my first glass objects. Here is shoe object from the installation by Francisco de Goya, Duchess of Alba. Yeah, the other shows from this time Sure objects, it was uh, in, in student, student studios. And here, the wedding of Arnold Fini, according, Arnold Fini according to Van Eyck, Dutch shoes from the 15th century. And here, the bought shoes, uh, Duchess of Alba after Francisco de Goya. Here we have the Duchess of Alba, probably a great love of Francisco de Goya. In the 1915, a hidden painted over writing was discovered on the painting. It was solo Goya, only Goya. The Alba points with the index finger at the lettering next to your feet, a token of love. During this time, I also worked with other materials, but I liked glass a lot. And since I had a classical academic education and did know, uh, know any glass technologies, glass was a very exotic and unknown material for me. Glass is rather unusual in contemporary sculpture. Technologically, I wanted to use this material in very simple way. I've come to a step further from my glass show objects. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in painting by the old masters. In the splendor and court portraits, I ad admired the opulent costumes of the portrait, including the shoes. But there were also countless other att attributes and symbols. My idea was to interpret this opulence in the modern way. As my next subject, I took magnificent portraits with the animals, dogs. From my role models, I took out the following motifs for the sculptural objects, the shoes and the portrait and <clears throat> the animal. The objects were represented three-dimensionally with the material glass. During this time, I prepared the sculptural series with the, <coughs> with the dogs. It was dog wall. It was 15 installations. They were shown in an exhibition in the Gallery Lorsch and Seidel Contemporary in Berlin. 
It was the first exhibition with glass objects. I used very famous painting motifs from Van Eyck, Gainsborough to Goya as a models. I implement the Spanish painting in green, the Dutch and German in blue, and the, mo the mo um, emotional motifs in red. The series begins with the series after Diego Velasquez. Here the royal hunting portraits. Here is a tired sitting dog. The Spanish king, Philip IV, was depicted here. Oops. And uh, here, the king's brother, Infante Don Fernando, is a hunter. In this series, I mostly work it with Bob Glass. Mm. And the family. <laughs> A little prince, the son of King Philip IV, with two companions. Unfortunately, Prince Balthazar Carlos died as a child. Here, while still alive and with hope for the future. The picture, the paintings, motifs contain so many stories and situations, secrets. It is very interesting to discover them. Here, a little companion for the Duchess of Alba in white one of the two life-size portraits of the pretty Spanish aristocrat. The pooch underlines the gracefulness of the woman. Small red dog. Hmm. And also Goya, a puppy pose, a young lady received a love letter. The dog becomes a symbol of love and eroticism. Standing. Here are little princess with a shaggy uncombed toy dog. Here you can see the round bottle shards very well. And this culture made my audience laugh. <laughs> very cute. <laughs> Small dog, bottle dog. And here, a bit bigger, a Grand Duke, Heinrich de Pius, and his wife. The animal symbols here mean the strength of power for the man and loyalty for the woman. A watchful, energetic, dangerous looking Saluki dog stands by the Duke. This bridge of dog was very expensive and precious in those times. A real status symbol. This is a painting by Lucas Cranach the Elder and the picture was very realistic for the circumstances at the time. The portrait were shown in life size. The painting was so admired and respected by the contemporaries that the sub ancestors made the core king in front of this picture, just as uh, they did in front of the living people. Hmm. And here, um, a Leap in Time by Two Centuries, a motive by Thomas Gainsborough, a beautiful strolling scene of the English aristocracy. Thomas Gainsborough was a sought after portrait painter, but his passion was landscape painting. That is very, um, that uh, is why his figures are often depicted in the landscape. I love also Pietro Longhi. Several paintings by the Venetian painter Pietro Longhi have also inspired, inspired me. Here La Presentazione. Pietro Longhi portrayed the rich Venetian bourgeoisie in his pretty young scenes. Thanks to him, we are allowed to visit the Venetian palaces of the time and we can be the observer in daily life on celebrations. Often there are also small animal companions here. Longis painted internals look like, like dollhouses, small theater stages. Yeah, also Longi. Another motive by Pietro Longi. Here the, the picture of the original painting, the lady receives a letter for this red dog. 
uh, here also after Pietro Longhi, a small dog and the newborn baby. This is the dog. And in blue, another example of a lap dog after Jan Vercolier, Dutch painter. And back to work process. What does the creation process of the sculpture look like? When I have chosen my motif, I start with numerous sketches and drawings. By drawing, I get to know the figure. By drawing, I feel the gestural bond with the figure. I get to know the shape, the proportions, the, exp the expression of the pose, the movement and the composition of my figure. Above all, do I also test whether this figure actually interests me? Here we see in the first animal figures, they were hunting trophies, animal heads, the sketches and the metal construction. Yeah, the construction and uh, sketch of Capricorn. I love drawing, then I have so many drawings and sketches. <laughs> <laughs> and here, I work very intensively with my sketches. They are intended for the work process. Here you can see how such a drawing looks like after a few days of studio stay. Here is a large walking sketch, Venus and Adonis after Rubens, a greyhound. I think the traces of the work on the drawing are very positive. The sketches then appear much more vivid. In these traces and distraction, the effort of the work, the struggle, struggle uh, with the material and form is documented. And the next sketch, walking sketch of the medical creature after Franz Franken, the temptation of St. Antonius. Here, another walk sketch after welding in, in the studio. I have also Small sketches when I sometimes want to present the project to a curator or a collector, I often make several drawings uh, so that you get to know my intentions. Here are some smaller sketches, mostly in DNA for size. The bears. This is it's lion duck. Foxes. Hmm. There are also um, some sketches based on Japanese um, printing and painting motifs because the last year I, I had uh, also solo exhibition in Japan and I, I, I did some, some motifs with Japanese, uh, Japanese art. The monkeys, monkey in the moon. can't see anything. The fish after Yoshu Hikanobu, the fish here was really realized as a sculpture. And also foxes. And monkeys. With long, long hunts. Here other animal sketches according to different motifs and here the wild cats. How many of these drawings have come to fruition and been made, would you say, Marta? Um two for all Martin Shapnish Vestan Forations, was was for Umskate. How many of these drawings have come to, uh, um, uh, to uh, yeah, to... Uh, been made. 
mit, ähm, in Sculpture sind umgesetzt worden. In, äh, Aha, wie viele sind umgesetzt worden von diesen? Ja, mm -hmm. ähm, oh, pff, I don't know. I think I'm not. Oh, <laughs> I have many, many sketches, gotcha. but some of them there are sculptures. I think um, 15 percent like okay. this. 15 percent, yeah. Some of them were just made to uh, talk about commission works. If uh, somebody is interested, ah, yes. oh, yeah, yeah, Marta, this... Marta proposes or asks, what motif uh, are you interested mm -hmm. in? Maybe a cat or whatever, or the collectors have a, a special idea. They want uh, a special kind of animal. And yes. then Marta is looking in art history for uh, uh, an interesting motif for mm -hmm. an interesting pose of the animal that is um, good to um, create in as a three-dimensional sculpture and then yes. the process is going on thank you yes, yes. there are the, the, the time um, periods then I, I am drawing and and searching it it's uh, and then I love them <laughs> gotcha very nice part of artwork Thank you. And here, while walking with the drawings, I often plan the coloring of the sculpture. I often create small three-dimensional models to feel the figure, to recognize the shape by touch. These pieces have all come to creation. Yes, because this is the, the planning, this, these small sketches and models, they're uh, this is the planning of the exhibition in Kunstpalast Düsseldorf some years, a few, few years ago. But uh, this is uh, also this exhibition plan. Ha. Coloring and together this um, combination of colors and figures. And uh, after the sketches, I prepare the main construction, this metal frame. It should be very robust to carry the weight of the glass. Here, the movement expression of the sculpture must be determined. This part has to be done with a lot of thought and care because the later corrections are difficult to make. Preparing constructions requires proper physical strength. The, frames, uh, the frame is made of steel and welded together. The further execution is closely connected with a well-designed construction. Now I'm, I'm doing a little bit myself welding, but um, it is very, <laughs> it is very strength and um, sometimes I, I need to help of craftsmen. Gotcha. And the construction are in themselves, even the sculptural objects. I like this, uh, that aesthetic, but I still use them for the further work process. And the construction also help with trans transport. I have worked out a system that enables the fri um, fragile objects to be transported safely. The steel structures um, accordingly have the places where you can push some metal rods in. With the help of the sticks, the sculpture are carried and also fastened in the boxes. My system uh, also allows different parts of the sculpture to be separated and transported separately. And after when the construction of the figure is finished, I apply the glass structure. Building the glass structure takes a time at the toilet work. The skill in how these many small parts are put together in what um, defines, defines the expression of the sculpture. But this is not a manual process, but the plastic shaping of my sculptural motifs. Whether this is glass or another material, such as clay or wood, would be. The shaping of the sculpture by the artist gives the work its effects, dynamics, static, structure, structure of the composition, uh, compositional effects, body space, relationships, 
the, text, the texture of the surface, whether something is haptic or something is smooth, cold. All these components must be observed and applied. It's an artistic process. And an artistic process has many phases. Sometimes it goes very quickly. Sometimes you have to change a lot. Sometimes it's easy and simple. Other times it's dramatic. You enjoy it and you, you suffer from it. And I think the, every artist knows, knows that. And here you can see from this, this process, from the sketch to the sculpture, uh, this is the monkey and drawing in the steel construction with the wire mesh, the, the first steps. And here, yeah, the monkey figure slowly gets the glass hair. And here you have monkey Eddie. Green. This is this lithography ah. uh, for the <laughs> green <I> see. <laughs> Yes, yes. The long, long tile and long hand. And the details of monkey. It's nice to see the work in the natural habitat of where it's created. Yes, yes, yes. We did this uh, images. It, it was funny. This, this, uh... And here about glass. How do I use the broken glass? Uh, all glass parts are mostly cut from flat glass. They must have uh, the appropriate shape, sometimes straight, sometimes curved short or long, wide or narrow. It all depends <clears throat> on the type of figure, of the motif. Uh, it is linked to the texture of the surface uh, I plan and what effect I want to achieve. I have a thousand, thousand shapes. And um, the cut broken glass can be compared to lines in a drawing, like the hatching lines in a drawing by the old master. The hatching, their size and the direction in which they are applied give the classic drawing the corresponding three-dimensional effects, recreating the shape of the drawing. But this is, this is two-dimensional. I can say I draw my sculptures with the small glass shapes but three-dimensional. The glass parts are applied to the figure in a similar way to the hatching in a drawing. The thought process is like drawing. Then I, I, I have to, to think I'm drawing. <laughs> gotcha. And you can see this here with the drawing of Durer. Here's some detail. The processing of the surface, the shaping of the overall sculpture, I realize very attentively with great attention to entire volume, but also to the detail. I am not satisfied with a sculpture. If I'm not satisfied with the sculpture or this part, I destroy these parts and build them up again. In order to make an effect of the work of art perfect, you need, in my opinion, a loosening and weakening, an international built mistake. You also need a little. You, you also also need a little spice in the work of art. In addition to perfectly cut shapes, a bizarre one, in a soft color gradient, in a small spot of foreign looking color. Here, the wall sculpture, Vestari, Maki. This is exhibition glass, Torres, Venice. 
and also in grass dress, a white dog on the gondola. This is a decorative piece of rich Venetians after Vittore Carpaccio. This is the detail of the painting. And the wall painting. And here in blue, how do I interpret, interpret my, the animals from classic paintings? The chosen motifs must fascinate or surprise me. I'm interested in the situation, what is happening in the picture, the pose of the animal and the movement. I find the animal motifs more interesting than human motifs for my sculptures. The animal motifs are more unusual, almost irritating for the motif <clears throat> of a sculpture. There is so much to discover in the painting of the old masters. There's no just about figurative uh, representations, about skillful craft, but also about symbolism conveying feelings, metaphors. These are zeitgeist, documentaries, reports. You can read them like books. I am fascinated by the masters mentioned here, Velasquez, Rembrandt, Rubens, Terborg, Gainsborough, Chardin, Goya, or, or, or many um, others. For my motifs, I prefer works from the 15th to 18th centuries where the figurative representation sometimes still appears bizarre, the works uh, of early Renaissance. The motifs that I use and examine, examine are like theater stages, stages for me, often a little arti artificially <laughs> depict, are wonderfully suitable for taking out the animal protagonist and inserting them in their own sin. I doing so, I alienate these motifs. This is alienation of color or size, alienation of material, and abstract and interpret. They are implemented in the form of contemporary art. And the figures I create on this basis are like frozen, taken out, isolated, left alone. My animal objects should shine with their own bizarre power. For me, they are an artistic metaphor for emotions, for the search for desire, which remain deeply hidden in us. The glass animals arouse childlike longing in people, but they as arouse irritation. The glass figures represent an ideal world, utopia, for which many people feel the desire. Here are sitting links from the sketch sheet by Albrecht Dürer, and uh, this links is in the collection of Kornig Museum as a gift of Marie and Blair Corcoran. Here a sketch sheet of for for the lynx and other animals after Dura. And the question, what is the difference between the animal motifs from the painting and my contemporary figures? As my sculptors are not animals, they are art objects. I use the painting's motifs not to copy the animals, but to create my own art objects. And with these own art objects, as create a new atmosphere, new effect. They should just be created as artistically, but appear artificial. They have nothing to do with lively, cute animals. I'm not a particular animal lover. The glittering pieces of glass and shards of the sculpture look so soft and so seductive. But this seduction is manipulation, artificial, questionable. 
the objects are on the one hand seductive and beautiful, but on uh, the other hand is, uh, are cold, sharp, dangerous, and lonely. I want them to be unsettling. These cultural objects lure you close but remain un un untouchable and autonomous. The red lock. And here, uh, it was in video, the first video also, a small animal in the still life. Squilla, and here realize it. But uh, presented in oversize uh, to abstract the motif, I use the oversize here. A squirrel from Still Life by Franz Snyders. In the middle of the lush fruit and vegetables, a cute little animal hides. But uh, that is also very decaptive. De the animal is not at all cute and sweet, but dangerous, powerful, aggressive, and sharp. Here an example of color alienation. Strong red color. Here is a love scene. The dot is a love and erotic symbol. This puppy is very unusual. It looks like a little lion, almost like a fantasy creature. <laughs> the detail of this lion. Fashionable, uh, fashionable lady with a puddle. Here is an example in red also, the red puddle. Details. And here another version of this motif in light colors. And here fish. The fish, according to Yoshu Hikanobu, a creature from the sea in glass. Dynamic, powerful movement is important here for me. The big fish. And here is an image with studio situation. And here the print motif of the fish. Here another fish, another fish motif, a fish in the cool colors of the water. After Utagawa Hiroshige. And the print and details. A small dog in the garden from 17th century. The dog has been made in pastel colors. Uh, lately, I prefer these lighter, transparent, and greenish tones. This sculpture belongs to the collection of Toyama Glass Art Museum. And here, the garden, garden view with dog. And here, we saw here again a puddle very well behaved next to a fashionable lady, 18th century. The green tones of the sculpture are fresh, but also calming. And uh, you know this and the following sculpture are recently in the exhibition at the Habitat Gallery. The two sculptures arrived in the USA in the summer. I hope you will also have the opportunity to see these works in the original form.
the green puddle. The ties. You saw this also, I think, in presentation. <laughs> right at the beginning. I have yes, a... yes, yes. Those are maybe the other images also. Right. And here, yeah, the blue one. The watchful puppy pool in blue, in the motif from the collection of the French fashion catalogs of the 18th century. And the dog looks alive and waits restlessly next to its owner. And it was nice. I enjoyed making this sculpture in different shades of blue. Although I sometimes create a few sculptures based on the same motif, but each sculpture is unique and original. With every sculpture, uh, I vary and discover new colors and forms expression. The print and the puddle. The legs. And the next. Not only real animals, but also fantasy beings are subjects of my sculptures. A devilish mythical creature um, seduces Saint Anthony with music that he plays on his nose mm. in orange. 28. This is this creature in Toyama in museum and here also an image from the last year with the companions mm -hmm. yes and another creature this is project based a project with demons based on giotto di bondone demons saint francis and hicks explosion of evil spirits from the city of arezzo this is fresco in assisi and here the demon. Realized character of uh, in the demon series. Hmm. This bigger one. It looks big. <laughs> and here the detail of the fresco. And some pictures of demon. The flights. Wow. Incredible. Tiles. And the demons flies away. And this is how I want to say goodbye to you with my presentation. Gotcha. This is amazing work. Um, I have a couple questions for you, Marta. Yeah. From the audience. I'll read them right now. Um, do you create a mock-up of how the glass will be applied to the frame or do you get into it and just start going? Mm, sometimes uh, you, you mean with coloring. With coloring and application and sizing. No. You do uh, it with I, the I, aluminum foil, with the aluminum folium. folium. Aha, nicht unbedingt auch. But, I, but, but uh, the first, the first uh, thought I, I think about the coloring, then I, I, I have, I, I explain it. I, I did uh, some sketches and uh, maybe aquarelle, and then I try to imagine the colors. But when I am decided for the um, main color, then I, I, I prepared my my glass pieces and uh, it is also improvisation i i can do it um, like like very straight project no it is also improvisation but i have uh, imagination uh, what a kind of color what a kind of piece it is and uh, then i can do it a little bit uh, um, relax them. <laughs> so, a bisschen, bisschen irgendwie 
Um, gotcha. That makes makes sense to me. The trial and error and magic, a little bit of magic, it's a little bit of mirrors. Um, I got a question about how would someone move the sculpture into their home should they desire um, with proper instruction. Um, as you saw in the presentation, there are metal rods that fit into the sculptures and there are mm -hmm. certain portions of the sculpture I can show you, I can't really show you this guy behind me because he's not here, but that come out of the actual sculptures and for yes. transportation are stored separately. So a, let's call it a patch of fur, for example, would come out and a metal rod will go in. It's the same mm -hmm. way the work is shipped. And I've had experience with this and so has Corey personally, where you're moving work around with the metal rods and once it's in mm -hmm. place, you pull the rods out and put the sections back in and it looks like a full sculpture. It's quite ingenious. Um, is, is this necessary because uh, they are uh, frig fragile? Fragile. I'm sorry of my English, yeah, but right. uh, yes, I have uh, this this system. It just was walking wood with the it, metal it's, rod. It's quite fun. You when you see someone installing the work, you'll see a chunk of the animal, a small little portion mm -hmm. of it, sitting next yeah. to it, and you're like, "What's that for?" And they put it in like a puzzle. It's quite fun. And when I was showing work in the past at art fairs, people were so curious with that same question and all of a sudden a piece appeared and they're like, oh, I get it, it's quite, quite awesome. Um, next question is, uh, how, how is the glass attached to the mesh, the metal? This is, this is where the glue is silicone glue, some silicone. I have, I have to, uh, I use the first, this main metal construction and after the mesh wire, uh, steel, this is, uh, but, um, Edelstahl, ich weiß nicht, wie ist das Edelstahl auf Deutsch, äh, auf Englisch? Stainless Steel. Stainless. Mm. Mm. And when mm. they, the, the glass is on there, is that because of the silicone, there's a little movement in the piece. So if yes, you take yes. a piece mm -hmm. of the glass and you wiggle it, it will stay attached. And it's, it's, it's quite genius for shipping and moving and, and installation because it's not as rigid as you would imagine and it keeps the work in place. Um, mm. It must be elastic. Right, must be elastic. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you use any computerization in your design? Das habe ich nicht verstanden. Ob du mit dem Computer arbeitest, du machst ja das. Ja, ja. Yes, yes. Some in. Meanwhile, meanwhile, yes. At the beginning, she did everything by hand and by herself, and now. I use also computer for three three D models. Sometimes, uh, and but uh, not so, not so much. I am very classical, and I, I use also you see many drawings, and I I love to touch my my sculptures, and uh, I can uh, I can I need the help of a craftsman, but the details I'm I have to do myself. It is uh, necessary. You have a real uh, grasp on the anatomy of animals and you to, to, to understand the form, less the fur, and have a vision of that with the movement and the tone. It, it's quite amazing to see when you showed the monkey early on in the process where you have the body looking so thin and then you're able to expand on the body. You have an amazing vision to be able to get from, to create that point A to make it look normal in point B uh, in, the, in a fantasy that it is. Um, Next question is, how many hours would you say would it take you to create a small dog? You know, and your small dogs are not that small, but. No. Uh, uh, the first is a uh, small dog. Uh, it's, um, what do you mean small dog? Because you, you, you can, uh, in this technique, it is necessary to do not too small because you didn't, uh, can do it. The material glass, I use this flat glass, they are three millimeter um, wide. Huh? And you can cut not so very, very, very small pieces. It it's, it's done, doesn't work. It's better to do small, but not too small. <laughs> right, I've, and, seen your, I've seen your work at medium scale and large scale. Oh yes. So I would, I would say, let's, let's talk about a medium For scale small, piece. For me, small, this is um, uh, 50 centimeters. So this is how, how much it is, uh, 25. Ich weiß nicht, wie viel das ist amerikanische? Martin? And egal, okay. Uh, but, but not too small. Like Good. this. <laughs> okay. It's perfect, like okay. I was saying. And yeah. what, so would the, what would the time? To there. Right. What but would the, is, 
Yeah. But this is uh, how long? How long? Yeah. Uh, if the this is uh, up of the figure. Some figures are very complicated. They have many many parts and uh, the puzzle. The, the puzzle. This, this is complicated. There are so many uh, parts in this uh, sculpture. It is small but complicated. And some figures are maybe not so uh, complicated form and it is a bit faster but it is um, uh, I don't know uh, sometimes I am able to do a sculpture in one or two months but sometimes it's like six months and uh, I, I love to do also the sculptures um, a few sculptures two or, or three uh, in the same time, it takes longer time mm -hmm. because you can do something with uh, one sculpture and to move and do you have any idea? It is better two two sculpture in the same time. It's uh, the best one or three. Three I I do I'm doing not so often. <laughs> same time, but, but two yes yes. You start to run out of room, but you you have the color. That's great. No no you have you have it is better to have this uh, all all sculptures near there. This this is nice so. <laughs> Very good. Well, well, thank you, Marta, so much for this amazing thank talk. You. And I appreciate you sharing it with all of us. And I learned a lot about your technique and your process in your life. So thank you again. And I'll be putting thank this also. I'll be putting this up on YouTube. Thank you, Martin, also for helping out and being here to assist yeah. Marta. And if anybody has more questions, this would be the time. And the works are at the gallery. We have two of them here at the gallery, one in Florida. The, both dogs are on display. You're welcome to come see them. And it's an amazing uh, uh, object to see in person. They draw a crowd in like you wouldn't believe. Um, I had a question about how do you clean the work? I'll, I'll let Marta take a crack at that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh, not, uh, not so complicated. You need this... Um... Yes. Uh, airbrush, wie heißt das? Uh, we have canned air. Harold, Harold's, Harold's got it, the canned air. No, this is not, not strong enough. Oh, really? You need the compress, uh, compression, compression machine. Oh, air compressor. Air compressor, yes. Air compressor you need. And the craft with, with uh, uh, air, it, it's going very well. You, you, uh, you scare me with that comment. I believe you, though. But I, uh, <laughs> we'll just use our canned air for now. It works perfectly for us at the gallery. <laughs> okay. So. But thank you so much and thank everybody for joining us today and feel free to share this with anybody who might be interested. And uh, like I said, they're uh, available at the gallery. So call me anytime and I'll see everybody next week for the Glass Art Fair. And thank you, Marta. And thank you, Martin. Be well, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye thank thank you. you. Take care. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Yes. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye, Hale. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.